It is senior night at Duke. Daniel Ewing, one of the players to be honored for the Blue Devils tonight in front of the usual sellout crowd at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Miami comes in with a lot of firepower like Guillermo Diaz, and they'll need it against the number six team in the country. It's Throwdown Thursday with the Hurricanes of Miami taking on the Blue Devils of Duke. And Duke looks like it will finish third in the conference behind North Carolina and Wake. But look at the log jam at seven and eight, including Miami. Now eight and eight is a lock for the NCAAs. The challenge is getting to eight and eight. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Len Elmore. It's great to have you with us from the ACC. A lot of people now saying, hey, maybe seven and nine is not a disqualifier if that's the way you finish in the ACC. Frank Haith, the Miami coach, one of them, he may be seven and nine after tonight. He'd love to be eight and eight, but he may be seven and nine. Well, seven and nine is a possibility, but it is better to be eight and eight because what it does, it removes the doubt. The tournament selection committee's job is a little bit easier. Now, if there are too many seven and nine teams, and when I count, there are five, seven, and eight teams with quality wins and decent schedules. Too many seven and nine teams now give somebody who's left behind an argument, well, I beat that guy, so right. I should go, et cetera. And Miami, with only 16 wins, this is their last regular season in game they need to get to 17 they need this one all right let's take a look at the star watch line one inside one outside well Guillermo Diaz for me is a surprise star in the ACC the most athletic player in the conference 25 points against Duke the last time out and Sheldon Williams candidate for national defensive player of the year but it was his offense that gave Miami fit 30 points against them the last time they played change in the lineup for Miami it's a coach's decision Paul Pallaby, who is a uh, true point guard, will start in place of Anthony Harris to sink over the three-guard lineup. Paul Pallaby has not had a turnover in limited action in the last three ball games. It's the usual lineup for two, with the exception of Reggie Love, a senior who gets a start. The former football player who came back to play this year broke a foot and missed a lot of action. Duke gets Tony Green and Bob Donato, the officiating crew for tonight. Cameron Indoor Stadium. Jump ball immediately on the defensive pressure by the Duke Blue Devils. There is Frank Haith, known throughout his career as the system as an exceptional recruiter. He has been here before as the assistant coach at Wake Forest. His kids have not been here before. And it try as he might, he tried to let them know about the intensity in this place about the fans and the focus of the Duke players. You just wonder if he was able to communicate that experience. Well, there's only so much you can tell them. They've got experience the rest, isn't that right? Absolutely. Looks like Miami's playing a box and one with the one playing J.J. Redick. Hopefully, everywhere he goes, he'll see a double team. That's a pile of beyond him. Ewing with a shot clock down to three, leans into a runner and got it. Excellent defense by Miami, but Duke scores nonetheless. Well, I'll tell you what, the first couple of minutes after a stirring ceremony before the game, senior night for Daniel Ewing, you can expect him to play on a lot of emotion. As you see again, against the pressure, ball pressure, Miami turns it over. Oh, Pollaby ends up with a double dribble, and there is Mike Krzyzewski in his 25th year at Duke. He has won better than 77% of his games. Just a remarkable record. I've done so many Duke games, I'll just run out of superlatives. <laughs> run out of mention of his accomplishment. You get a letter sweater before this one started. Part of senior night. Duke with an offensive rebound. That was Reggie Love. Mel Keone, a really good outside shooter, missed that. The rebound goes to Robert Height, the junior from Cincinnati. Well, in two possessions so far, Miami's yet to get a shot off. Diaz is not shy. He is the number two scorer in the ACC. They don't get inside very much. Frisbee had that opportunity, and the landlord rejected it. This pass knocked away. Somehow Ewing got it back. Leans into one. Offensive foul on Ewing. Just got in too deep. That will be one on Daniel Ewing. That's a pretty good job by William Frisbee again. After not getting on the floor for the ball, Frisbee recovers nicely and takes the lane away from Ewing. And you need your big guys to take a few charges because that plants the seed in the mind of the guards. 
that he may block it, but he also may take the charge. A little indecision creates mistakes. 2-0 Duke, and Anthony Harris has checked into the ball game. He's number 12. He's not shy about putting it up either, just inside the three-point line. We're tied at two. And that's what Miami needs. It needs someone with the capability of taking off the bounce, attacking Duke aggressively, forcing the help, and finding open men. Len, I'm not sure what we'll see out of Miami offense tonight, but the game we had down in Miami is Reddick deals to Sheldon Williams. They had very few assists. The guy who would bring it up court was the guy who ended up taking the shot. Well, again, that's because the way Miami is constructed, you've got two guys in height and Diaz who can really play good man-to-man -man ball. You see Okpalabi get screened off and the penetration. That was one of the reasons Sheldon Williams was able to score so many times at such a high percentage down in Miami because of the penetration by the Miami Anthony King gives it up. Ewing nearly had to steal, knock it away from Harris. It's out to Miami, and Duke showing good quickness on defense early. Just a little. Melchione to a wide open Ewing. He passed on the shot. Now kicks it back out and threw it away. Was it touched by Miami? It was. But Mike, going back to your point regarding Melchione, averaging 13 points, five rebounds at a clear high 16 in the last game of St. John's. And Mike Krzyzewski told us he came up big. He was the savior in that particular game. Reach in foul on Opalaby. His Got a timeout. Reddick helping Duke run and then getting the three himself. And the Blue Devils are up by six after five minutes. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Saab. Distinctively designed and independently inspired. Saab, the state of independence. And KFC's new 99 cent snacker. Now your dollar goes further at KFC. Surfs up, but Cameron Endor, and it's a 10 4 score. Duke on top of Miami. 15 14 to go first half. CC teams at seven and eight, all hopeful of making the NCAA tournament. And Lenny, here's the resume for the Hurricanes. Well, you look at obviously the quality wins, and those are ranked teams that are playing well, but the loss, the South Carolina State loss, 
That was the second game of the season, and it was at home. And that's why I say 8-8 eight eight is a heck of a lot better position to be in than 7-9. and nine. Demarcus Nelson checked into the ball game, immediately hits a shot to make it 13 to 4. Duke has its outside shooting shoes on as Nelson comes in, averaging six and a half points a game. He becomes more important with the loss of Sean Dockery. Oh, absolutely. We talked about uh, the fact that Nelson has to come up big, as Mike Krzyzewski told us. But Dockery on the bench, what you lose is intensity defensively, ball pressure. You know, a pretty good shooter, and as Mike said, a great teammate, a leader out there on the floor. He helps him with the chemistry, and Demarcus Nelson, as a freshman, has to step into those shoes. Reddick, a mile outside. It doesn't matter. If he's hot, anything inside midcourt. 16-4. Nothing like being at home when you can walk around in the dark and you know where all the furniture is. <laughs> Then he can throw a cup from the edge of the bed into the entrance to the bathroom. Nelson brings it back. Reddick. Nelson trying to go baseline. And an offensive foul called on Nelson and Mike Krzyzewski beside himself on that one. Now again, for those at home who are saying, well, his feet were moving, you can still draw a charge. Oh. Now that time, Height stepped into the pass. Yes, he did. But I, I, I assume the official interpreted it as Nelson crossing that line. The defender is allowed to move in his space as long as he's going on a straight line guarding the ball. And when the player with the ball encroaches that area, it's an offensive foul. That one obviously was a mistake. No, I don't think. Yeah, he Those never he never got to that one. Wherever that line was, he was. Well, I was just trying to educate because so many people say, That's well, right. his feet were moving. Well, you can throw a charge even if you're trying to move. Reddick off target that time, out of bounds. And this one is out to Duke. Go back to that last three for Reddick. Uh, wow. Oh. That, that was out in Carborough somewhere, <laughs> which is a suburb of Durham. But didn't break down in form. It was still perfect form. Well, you know, in the St. John's game, was not a masterpiece for Duke, and Mike admitted so, and he thought it was the results of playing three games in five nights, and he had a weary team. I'm sure they had a chance to rest a little bit, and you can tell by J.J.'s legs that he's ready to go. That was not a foul. That was a turnover as the Miami player stepped out of bounds. The third turnover for Frank Hayes' team, and they are down early, big, 16-4. to four. And when Duke gets a big lead, not necessarily this early, but later in the game, you can expect them to slow it down a lot because they want to rest their players as much as possible leading up to the ACC tournament. And Williams mugged inside. That foul on Gary Hamilton, who landed on him. That'll be one on Hamilton. It'll be interesting, I think, to watch the tournament next week. I'll talk about that in a second. Well, you look at Sheldon Williams on the lob pass. Nice job of holding everybody off, and then he draws a few birds, a little couple of pigeons bit. <laughs> next week in the tournament, it's going to be very difficult for thin teams, and Duke is thin, to play three games in three days and still have something left for the NCAA. I mean, you're really going to have to pace yourself if you're Mike Krzyzewski. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's been doing it all year because right. we know that he's suffered injuries to a number of scholarship players. But that's going to be the biggest challenge, particularly if the first couple of games are close games and he needs those guys on the floor. Yeah. Well, right now, he is having no problem whatsoever. Sean Dockery will not be available for the ACC tournament, will not be available for the NCAA. He's missed only two. Perhaps an outside shot he could come back if they get deep into the tournament. Reggie Love missed 12 with a broken bone in his foot. McClure was out seven with a bad knee. Shamblick Randolph missed four full games with mononucleosis, but was affected in several others. So the four is really a misnomer. Uh, they were very hopeful of getting back to full strength and then the knee injury to Dockery, uh, who was, you feel bad for the young man because he obviously worked so hard to make himself a better player over the summer and did. He's a much better player than he was. Well, a tremendous improvement, particularly with his three-point field goal accuracy. 
his free throw shooting. And again, as a ball handler and leader out there on the floor, Mike Krzyzewski really didn't hesitate to give Daniel Ewing a little bit of rest and let Doc Ewing run the show. But now, you know, the guy who's going to be asked to do that would be Demarcus Nelson, a freshman. And this is the first ACC tournament upcoming. I don't know how he's going to react. It's not going to be easy, and it may mean more minutes for Ewing, and that's going to be tough on him. Nelson looking inside, tried to force it to Randolph. Good defense that time by Miami. I'd like to get Diaz untracked here. He's open for three. Diaz, a streak shooter, missed that. Hamilton rebound, tipped away. Diaz trying to go baseline and walked. Illinois, the only undefeated team left in Division I. 28 0, the best start ever. The last home game tonight on ESPN2. Gene Cady and his Purdue Toilet Makers draw the short straw. Cady in his last year going out with maybe his least successful ball club of his career. And that's obviously got to be bittersweet for Illinois coach Bruce Weber, who was a longtime right. Cady assistant. But, you know, they've got. They've got to play that game, and they've got to win that game to go undefeated in the regular season. So I say bittersweet, but you can bet Bruce Weber's team is looking to deliver a knockout punch early. And you know Gene will not go quietly. Shavlik Randolph with a rebound, and then lost it out of bounds. 11.37 to go in the first half. Duke in control against Miami. Thanks very much. And we have a uh, semi blowout going here with Duke leading Miami early 19 to 6. Duke just dominating every aspect of this game, Ronnie. Well, particularly on the glass. I mean, Miami is 0 for 9 from the field, but they're the leading offensive rebounding team in the ACC, and they get 15 offensive rebounds, approximately 15 points. And they've got zero offensive rebounds despite missing nine shots. So, an excellent job on the glass by Duke. A lot of one-on-one play. That's the fifth turnover for the Canes. And that's the danger in trying to go one-on-one -on -one too often against Duke. You know, but that's Miami style. That's why they're last yep. in assists. Randolph lost that one, picked off by Hamilton. Height comes back the other way, gives it up to Diaz, who has been a non-factor so far. Got by Love that time, tries to hit a runner. There's an offensive rebound and a follow by Frisbee. There's a score. Both rarities. Frank Hayes knew this would not be easy. He lost his leading scorer from a year ago to graduation as Reddick buries another three. He lost a couple of players because of the coaching change. He lost his best recruit because of the coaching change. But he didn't come there for a quick fix. He's got a great institution. He thinks he has a great product to sell. Uh, he has been at Wake Forest, where he was a success as an assistant. He has been at Texas, where he was a great success as an assistant. And he is convinced that he can do the same as the head man at Miami. He's got a nice facility, too. Well, absolutely. And one thing you know about Frank Hay is that he can recruit. You know, he's done a terrific yes, job at the schools you mentioned. And now, you know, at a school like Miami with the facilities they have, he shouldn't have any problem getting players. His problem right now is trying to contain J.J. Redick, who already has 11 points in the first 10 minutes. That time they got good position inside with Frisbee, but he couldn't make the shot against Williams. But they need to go back to that, but it's at least giving him some rhythm offensively. Now Williams will try to return the favor. Forced it up, couldn't get it. Randolph offensive rebound. His follow won't go, and there's Harris to clear. Now Miami's biggest problem is that Duke's pressure is really taking them out of any offensive rhythm. They're in a secondary break situation. They find an open shot. And when you find open shots, you can't be afraid to take them. And Harris didn't rush it, shot it in rhythm, and made it 24-11. So Reddick.
Reddick has equaled Miami's offensive output so far. Reddick behind the screen. Foul behind the line. That will be a three shot foul. You just can't do that, especially with Reddick. That's you might as well not even force him to go to the free throw line. Just give him the three. Well, and he, he tried to block it from the side. Really, not really a block. Just put a hand in his face. But you see, JJ Reddick has this thing. He kicks his legs out as a lot of three-point shooters do. And as a defender goes by, he can't help but make contact. It's like the punter trying to draw contact right. in that situation. If you're close. And you don't get any of the ball, you're gonna wind up, yep. you're gonna wind up making contact. Reddick, the best free throw shooter for his career in the history of the NCAA. That one actually hit the rim and had to dribble in, which is unusual for him. Coming to the line before those two, he was 156 of 167 this year. Are you kidding? It just has a remarkable stroke. It is the same routine every time and virtually the same result every time. But he is second in the ACC to Chris McCray of Maryland, who is having a brilliant year from the line. Diaz, who's going to really get up, skies in the lane and scores there. And that's what Guillermo Diaz has to realize, that if he can take off the bounce, just get in the mid-range, one or two dribbles in that paint, he can elevate over everyone, and he has open shots. Tremendous vertical leap. Six points down from Melchioni, who hits another long-range bomb. Wide open is Hamilton. Maybe not the shot they wanted from the 6'10 center. Offensive rebound to Frisbee. Hamilton comes out, sets a screen. Diaz, tough shot, will draw the foul. And again, now they're trying to establish a little inside out. You saw Miami go to Frisbee a couple times. Now outside, you've got some openings for Diaz. You develop a, a continuity with that. Try to look inside out and maybe get yourself some offensive win. Because right now, Miami just looks lost. And a lot of it has to do with the two shots. And doesn't it always have to do with the Duke defense, even if they're not stealing uh, balls and getting wide open layups, which they did for so many years? This team is not going to do a lot of that. But they play such solid defense, and they force you most of the time out of the rhythm that you want to play. Absolutely, particularly on the passing lanes. You know, a lot of teams like to start their offense by hitting one of the wings, and Duke will take that away from you and force you to go to plan B. And a lot of teams just aren't ready for playing B. A little zone press. Duke has hit six out of ten from long range so far to build a 16-point lead. Ewing with a tough shot. And that time Miami went back to man to man and had seen enough for that boxing one against JJ Reddick that wasn't really working. They look like a little carry right there. See, out of control. No offensive exactly. rhythm whatsoever. Uh oh, I like stuff right here. Nope. Diaz back the other way. Offensive foul. Melchioni may have gotten away with a little flop that time. Yeah, he was falling before contact was made. Yeah. I don't think Diaz is quite that strong. very much it's a 30 to 14 game here with Duke on top let's go back to that last charging call sometimes the officials in the wrong spot to call it Lenny yeah Lee Melchione's got a job in sales or <laughs> acting but right there he started falling way before Diaz even got to him and you know whatever he was selling the official bought it listen for you old timer Sonny Liston gave up more <laughs> effort to go down in Lewiston against Muhammad Ali than that one that was the phantom charge. Reddick, the ACC's leading scorer, already has 16, and it's just hot as a pistol. Well, Paul will be back in, being guarded by DeMarcus Nelson. Five second call, they'll turn it over. 
sometimes you're doing so many things just to get away from defensive pressure that you just lose track like you did there. Well, Okolobi didn't have any outlets. The, as I mentioned before, Duke overplays the wings. When they cross, they switch. So there's always somebody there trying to take away that pass. Williams gets a deep maneuver for, for position. Excellent defense by Anthony King, who just wouldn't let him get out from under the basket support. Well, Sheldon Williams leads the ACC in blocks, but Anthony King is number two. So he's making a little bit of a statement there, even if his team isn't. Diaz gives it up to Opalaby. 6.39 and counting first half. 32-14. Opalaby may have gotten away with a little push-off and hits the jumper. He has four. Well, when you take away the wings, that's one way to create some opportunities. Down the middle, there's no help. And Opalaby really just had a one-on-one -on -one situation that he took advantage of. You do that enough times, you force Duke to make an adjustment, and then you can start your offense a little better. Williams wheels into the lane, and Williams is tied up with Frisbee. And look at this. Two big guys not about to give in to the other. And the officials do a really nice job of stepping in. Well, you take a look right there. Williams just bogarts his way down on the blocks. It's a nice job splitting the D. And then they get their arms tangled up. And that's just a mind game right there. William yep. Frisbee says, if I can't stop you physically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with your head. We're at Cameron Indoor with 6.07 to go in the first half. And Duke on top of Miami, 34 and 16. J.J. Reddick, 5 out of 6 from the floor and just tearing it up for the Blue Devils. He is the ACC's leading scorer, 22 and a half points a game. He will win the scoring championship. A lot of Duke players have done that. Sheldon Williams is going to win the rebounding title in the ACC. Only two other Duke players have ever done that. So a little history for this year's edition of the Duke Blue Devils. Well, I will say this again. And Sheldon Williams averaging that double-double. Probably played some of the finest pivot basketball in the country today. There was a period of time in January where he might have been the absolute best postman in America. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you got guys like Wayne Simeon who's come on, a couple of other guys that come on to really challenge, but you look at those numbers right there, and it just tells the story. Tremendous improvement from last year. And one of the things is he's been able to pick up the defensive intensity without increasing his fouls. Last year, foul prone. This year, pretty much stayed out of foul trouble. Yeah, this year, very rarely has he had a problem with fouls at all. And that's been a major difference because there is nobody, literally, to come in and play that pivot. I mean, Shadwick Randolph is not a center. Even though he will play there. Here's the double team. They finally get rid of it to Harris. Wilkins, tough shot, rims out. Reddick had the rebound, knocked out of his hands, out to Duke. Tomorrow night, ESPN will have an NBA doubleheader for you. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern with the Kia NBA shoot-around. Then at 8, Shaq, Dwayne Wade, and Miami look to heat up the season series with the Sacramento Kings. 10.30 Eastern, the Mavericks and the Lakers. NBA Friday, coast-to-coast. Coast. Duke just getting the ball much too deep on the block. If it's not Sheldon Williams, that time Reggie Love as his teammates. I'm sorry, DeMarcus Nelson as his teammates really look on the blocks for both of those guys. Nelson at 6-3 was the leading scorer in California prep history, but he was also the number three rebounder ever to play high school in California at 6'3". Well, look at the upper body strength right there, along with the explosiveness and kind of a fearlessness in getting in the paint, even at 6'3". And right now, he's the second leading freshman rebounder in the 